Joining me now is Ray Halbritter of the uh, Oneida Indian Nation representative and a, and a vocal leader against the Redskins name. Uh, Mr. Halbritter, thanks so much for being here. What, first, your reaction to, to President Obama's words uh, about possibly changing the name if he were the owner. Well, we were certainly gratified with the president's comments that if he were the owner of the team, he would consider changing its name. I think it certainly adds uh, momentum to this issue, and as the first sitting president to take on that issue, I think it certainly um, is something that's significant and historic. We're also gratified to hear uh, senior Congressman Tom Cole as well, Republican congressman, who also uh, voiced his opposition to the team name as well. Redskins owner Dan Snyder was once quoted as saying, quote, we'll never change the name, it's that simple, never. You can use caps, and according to the Washington Post, Roger Goodell is under no pressure to press for a name change. Do you think this is ever going to happen? Well, history is littered with people who have vowed never to change something. Uh, slavery, integration, uh, women's rights. So we think that what, one thing that's really great about this country is when, when many people speak out, change can happen. Lanny Davis pointed out other professional teams with Native American logos and mascots. Why the main focus on the Redskins and not teams like the Atlanta Braves or the Cleveland Indians, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Chicago Blackhawks? Well, let's be clear. Uh, the, the, the name, the R word, is defined in the dictionary as an offensive term. It is a racial epithet. It's a racial slur. I think there is a broader discussion to be had about using mascots generally and the damage it does to people and their self-identity. But certainly there's, there's no gray area on this issue. A study by a Smithsonian Institution senior linguist close to a decade ago uh, suggested that in his view, his scholarship, the term redskin was first used by Native Americans to distinguish themselves from whites who were encroaching upon their land. Does that matter to you at all if that is how the term originated? Well, as we learned yesterday, there's not only broad, diverse opposition, but there is many studies and scientific evidence that use of racial slurs like this creates damage not in, in the community, including young children. And this is all about the kids. This was so inspiring to us when the Cooperstown kids and the Cooperstown Hall uh, Baseball Hall of Fame is located in Cooperstown, decided on their own initiative to change the R word of their team to another name. And that gave us such inspiration. But does it matter at all that the, the name originally may have not been an epithet, that in fact it may have been used by Native Americans? Well, regardless of what the origin is, it's creating damage now. Okay. And no matter what poll you take, no matter what you do, the damage is being created. Scientifically, that's evidence that there is damage to the image of, to especially to young children. And this is why this issue is so important, not only to us, but our whole, uh, all of America, all of our community. And lastly, sir, some sports writers, including Sports Illustrated's uh, Peter King, USA Today's Christine Brennan, they've said they're just going to stop using the nickname Redskins. Is, is that a good start for you? Well, I think it, it, it's the right thing to do. And sometimes we need to do the right thing, and sometimes it's not always easy. But it's, it's very uh, respectful. Uh, we, need, we want to see uh, this country unified. We want to, the NFL to succeed. We're proud sponsors of the NFL. But we want it to not only be America's pastime, but express America's ideals as well. And this name does not do that. It's divisive. Its origin is hate. It's used as hate. It was the name our people that was used against our people when we were forced off our lands at gunpoint. It was, it was a name that was used when our children were forced uh, out of our homes and into boarding schools. So it has a sordid history. And it's time for a change. And we hope that, and what's great is that enough people do recognize that their change will come. All right. Ray Halbreder from the Oneida Indian Nation, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the opportunity.